Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we continue with the program, I'd like to uh, read you a letter I received uh, today. <clears throat> Let me just open it here. Dear David, on behalf of the American Museum Association, I would like to thank you and the staff of your show. Nationwide museum attendance is up 35% this season. <laughs> And most of the credit belongs to you. Well, thank you very much. Your visits to the Museum of Baseball, the Museum of the City of New York, the Museum of Modern Art, and the Museum of the Hard to Believe, twice, <laughs> have apparently instilled a thirst for culture in Americans of all ages. I trust your museum excursions will continue in the coming weeks. Sincerely yours, Lewis White, Ph.D. What a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tonight, we are going to visit yet another museum. Tonight, we're going to pay a visit to the Hollywood Museum. Follow me if you... Hi, Paul. Do you know where the museum is? Right back here? Fine. Thank you. Paul Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Paul Schaefer. Yes, here we are in the lovely Hollywood Museum where you find artifacts and relics of many, many dozens of years of filmmaking in this country. Here is the first display right here. This neatly sanded plank of cedar wood may not look familiar, but it's had a hand in several popular films recently. Yes, truly an unsung hero of Hollywood, this unassuming board has served as Bo Derrick's acting coach since 1978. Here in the Hollywood, the Hollywood Museum, ladies and gentlemen, it's almost like being in a cathedral here in the Hollywood Museum. What movie museum would be complete without a tribute to those lovable scamps, the Little Rascals, shown here in 1928? And, and that's right. And who could forget their lovable mascot, the original Pete the Pup? And, and where's, where's Pete today? Well, Pete is right here, preserved for today's youngsters to pet and enjoy. There's Pete the Pup. <laughs> oh, here we are. Um, here's an impressive display. The 2001 Honor Roll. Now, this is a list of every person around the world who understood the ending of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Let's, there's Ed Johnson and John Winters, both understood. All right. Uh, repellent and yet oddly majestic, it's the brain of Don Amici. Preserved forever in this jar of formaldehyde, the most amazing thing about this exhibit is Don Amici is still alive. Trivia buffs are going to love this one. A minor 1947 comedy called Holiday in May is now remembered for just one reason. It featured a walk-on by the then unknown actor, Buddy Zilla. The young performer, who later, of course, changed his name to Godzilla, played a bit part as a traffic cop, and needless to say, he stole the movie. <laughs> Buddy Zilla. Here's a very rare Hollywood relic, one of a kind. It's the script that Elliot Gould turned down. Yes. Believe it or not, Elliot Gould actually refused the role of Sheriff Lucas in Truck Stop, Truck Stop Mama. Of course, he did appear in the sequel, Diesel Girls, as an unscrupulous drag race promoter. Uh, well, what of the theater of the future, you may be asking? Well, here's what the theater holds for a movie, Golder. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what the future holds for movie goers. goers. Uh, the trend toward multiple screen movie houses in America's shopping malls will, of course, continue. Here we see an artist's conception of the Mayfair Mall Cinema 120. Which, <laughs> this will have 120 different screens and four to six seats per theater. That's what the future holds for movie goers. Um, well, you know, smash hits like E.T. generate millions in related gift items, E.T. dolls, E.T. pencil sharpeners, and so on, but not all movie merchandise catches on with the fickle public. Here are a couple that didn't quite make it. We have, of course, the Sorrow and the Pity lunchbox and thermos. <laughs> and the Apocalypse Now after dinner mints. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, now here uh, truly is a startling exhibit. Can we see this? The Black Man in an Elvis Movie. <laughs> now, this crowd scene from Viva Las Vegas, magnified down here 600 times, 
clearly reveals a black actor in the background obscured by some drapes. Yes, it's me. Oh, uh, I tell you what, we're going to, uh, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to pause for a commercial. We'll be right back with Gene Autry. is here with us tonight also uh, survivalist and tracker Tom Brown and uh, comedian uh, Diane Nichols will be joining us but first ladies and gentlemen late night is proud to welcome station KWY TV in Philadelphia to our fine family of NBC affiliates and here now in a special tribute to Philadelphia are the sitter city <laughs> the city of brotherly love players folks After dinner, can I go play in the famous Penn Center, the spacious bank and office complex, and one of the landmarks of Philadelphia's urban renewal program? <laughs> All right, Jimmy, but remember, Philadelphia is a center for U.S. education, culture, finance, and trade. It's the third largest clothing manufacturer and is a major U.S. shipbuilding site. I was shopping today in one of Philadelphia's numerous market districts. I found parking facilities quickly and easily. It made me feel proud. As proud as William Penn must have felt when he founded Philadelphia in 1682. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, maybe it would be nice, Gene. Um, now, let me make one correction here. The station there is KYW. Thank you. KYW, we're proud to have those folks with us now on the fine lineup of NBC stations. Thank you very much, uh, Gene Autry, handing me a tissue, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> um. Honey, are all those people really from Philadelphia? Yes, and that's not all. There's David Brenner. Bill Cosby, Princess Grace, and Joey Bishop. Joey Bishop? He's funny. <laughs> <clears throat> Those, of course, are the city of brotherly love players, just sort of our way of saying hello to Philadelphia. And, of course, new NBC affiliate there for us, KYW-TV. We're proud to have them along. My next guest...